Hello and welcome back to the channel. I think I've got a really exciting vlog today. The title of the uh, vlog gives it away 100%, nothing clickbaity, nothing crazy like that. Uh, before I begin though, uh, hey, let's, uh, I'm gonna be giving away my Cletus McFarlane t-shirt, signed t-shirt from Cletus McFarlane. The new shirt, Leroy is a Savage shirt, I'm giving away in this vlog. Stay tuned and I'll tell you how to win this vlog. It's very simple. Win that shirt. It's very simple. I have about 13 things to do today. I have a huge list of things. Now you see Pony Eater is not here. Uh, there's the Corvette. There's the Tesla. There's my daughter's Chevy Cruze. Um, so I'm going to be driving the Tesla today and headed uh, to get something to eat and uh, to go to uh, Home Depot? No, uh, Office Depot, Office Depot, uh, because I'm gonna get a whiteboard uh, so I can demonstrate some of the things that I'm talking about so that way you understand it 100%. This is probably the number one question that I get through text message, on my comments, uh, all the time. So as the video is titled, uh, I'm gonna talk about how to buy your first car and in general, how to buy a car. Um, and I'm gonna assume, uh, the I'm gonna have a couple assumptions. So I'm gonna assume that uh, you haven't bought a car before, that you're looking to buy a, a fairly nicer car, not a piece of shit, um, and uh, that you're gonna do credit. So uh, kind of a forefront of this matter is, now I have a 23-year-old son who's a United States Marine, hoorah. I have a 19-year-old daughter and I have a 17-year-old daughter. So the stuff that I'm talking about is not only things that I kind of show people that are coming into my dealership, but I also have done firsthand, first knowledge with my own kids, which you know I'm not gonna screw my kids over, especially to a Marine that could kill me three different ways before I hit the ground if you wanted to. So, um, so with that being said, keep that in mind and keep everything kind of in a general, general term because everything uh, is a case-by-case -case situation. 100%. So every person that walks in the door um, has a different situation than the last. Um, one of the, and one of the things, one of the things that I hate um, with with selling cars is working with consumers that just don't know. Um, a lot of times, first gut reaction is you stupid idiot. What the hell are you thinking? Why are you coming in not doing research, not doing this, not doing that, not knowing? And then I go back to the thing, it's like, Mike, don't be a stupid idiot. They don't know any better. They're not taught this in school. You're not taught in high school, in college, how to buy a car, how to build credit, how to buy a house, stuff like that. So with this video, that's my goal, is to show you how to buy a car. Welcome to McDonald's, how can I help you? Can I have a number two with large fry and a large Coke? I'm told it's gonna be 555. Thank you. I don't really eat McDonald's much, but for whatever reason, like I woke up this morning and I'm just craving cheeseburgers and french fries. So that's what I'm doing. Oh yeah, that's it right there. Mm. Tell you, McDonald's does have going for them is their uh, fries and their Coke. All right, so I got my food. So now off to, I think it's called Office Depot. Um, so you get the whiteboard and then head back home and I will see you there and start showing you what we've got to do. But in the meantime, let's do some mail time. I got some, uh, a bunch of packages I need to open up. It's been a while. And uh, if you want to uh, send me something to get a shout out on the next vlog, PO box is right below. So let's start out with a quick mail time. Um, this one's really, really easy. This actually comes from um, Brad Hood here in uh, the Louisville area. Um, it's really easy to figure out what this is, which I'll take it. Big old 1.75 liter of Woodford bourbon. Uh, if you know or don't know, Woodford is actually uh, made right here in the Louisville area. There's kind of, they're kind of on the outskirts of town, um, but in the Louisville area. Uh, if you're ever down here, check out the bourbon trail. Very, very cool trail. So uh, this one is pretty special. Uh, it doesn't look beat up. This was mailed to me over a year ago and it came from William McCormick. And uh, he texted me and says, hey, did you ever get this Corvette book? I said, no, I didn't. And uh, it came about a week and a half ago and I haven't told him yet. So I'm gonna tell him in the, in the uh, vlog here 
thank you so much. This is really, really cool. Uh, I was looking through it the other day, just some of the stuff that it talks about and the vehicles and you know things that I've sold here and there. I mean, that's, that's really, really cool. Engine stuff. And I uh, can't wait to read a little bit more of it. Um, this one comes from Jerry down in Texas, um, being a big Corvette guy. I got a, you can't see it, but I got a Corvette uh, man cave sign up there, so I'll have to find some place uh, to put this. I've got a Corvette Stingray LED light uh, over here. Um, this one, you gotta go with Camaro, right? Uh, ZL1 dude. Uh, this is where a lot of people found out where I am. I'm one of the top Corvette salesmen, one of the top Camaro salesmen. So ZL1 dude is pretty cool. This comes from uh, Vinny in New York. So that's really awesome. The uh, This one here, this comes from Vince. Uh, Vince actually here in Louisville as well. It's pretty cool. We've got a couple Louisville people uh, sending me stuff. And this is... This is a Peyton Manning jersey. That's cool. Huge Colts fan. Uh, huge Cubs fan as well. I got a Colts logo up there, so that's really cool uh, that he sent that to me as well. Uh, see what here. This is coming from Grant uh, in Grant's Pass, Oregon. Oh, Grant lives in Grant's Pass, Oregon. That's cool. So, um, let's see what here. Oh, he works at Row Motors up there. So he's in car sales. And he says, Mike, I couldn't buy you an Aztec, but I still, uh, but you're still the owner of an owner's manual. Enjoy Grant. That's really cool. So, uh, so I have a 2004 Pontiac Aztec manual. This is really cool. So if you guys don't know, um, you have to be on my Facebook to really know about it. I'm a huge Aztec fan, the ugliest vehicle in the world. Um, so with the last video, which is right up here, the ugliest car I've ever traded for, that's kind of like uh, maybe not so true because I traded for quite a few Aztecs, Aztecs and those are but ugly. But I love the vehicle. I mean, you can get a tent with them. They're versatile. You got speakers in the back. I mean, they're just, they're just awesome vehicles. So Grant um, from Grant Pass, Oregon, who works for Row Motors, their GM dealer uh, up there. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. That's really cool. Um, let's open this one. This just says coming from Amazon Fulfillment Center. So we'll see what's in here. box make sure it's not ticking that would not be good we don't want any ticking boxes do we just some lettering on it oh it's a mug and it says Chevrolet now that's really cool uh, it, I don't know who it came from though there's no note there's no there's nothing in here so whoever sent me the Chevy mug Thank you so much. That's really, really cool. Uh, actually, I might put this on my desk at work. And then the last one here, this one is coming from, oh, nah, I can't be. This is coming from Cold Air Inductions. So let's see what we got here. Cold Air Inductions up in Michigan. That's what I have on my Camaro is a cold air intake from cold air inductions. You saw that video of me beating GM's time. Oh, this is cool. Let's see, open this up a little bit more. There you go, it's a sweatshirt. It's perfect for this winter. Oh, that's the back. This is the front right here, cold air inductions cold air inductions on the back so there you go so if you want to send me uh some cool stuff p.o box is down below and uh, i'll open it up and give you a shout out on my next vlog so thanks a lot uh for everybody grant cold air inductions brad Vinny, vent oh i got two things from events that's really wild Vinny and vents uh grant and i and i don't know who the mug came from jerry and will mccormick so hey thanks everybody i really appreciate it now
On to the Thanks for sticking with me on this vlog. I know it's really, really long. I'm getting to how to buy your first car right now. But before I do, here is the Cletus McFarland. Leroy is a savage shirt, brand new shirt that he's doing. He signed this for me to give away on a vlog, so it's right there. He signed it. And only things you have to do, it's very, very simple, is be a subscriber. So hit the subscribe button. Hit the little bell notification. It looks like this, right next to the word subscribe. And then also, um, down in the comments below, once you've done those two things, write the word done. So I'm gonna use a computer program that picks uh, random people and the things that I'm telling it to pick is subscribers, people who've got notifications on, and then also have the word done. So hit that and win the shirt. So the first thing you wanna remember when you're buying your first car is to walk into a dealership with good, po with good knowledge of all the other things I'm getting ready to show you and teach you. But the very first thing you want to do is make sure you go in with an open mind. So my goal is to show you to walk into a dealership, not have any curveballs thrown at you, and go at it. So um, I'm going to use an example of a 2014 Chevy Malibu LT that we have on in our inventory right now. You're seeing it on the screen as we speak. Now this car is a uh, got 32,000 miles on it. And we traditionally don't negotiate price. Um, the reason we don't negotiate price anymore is because all these websites are sitting here and telling you if it's a good deal. They tell you everything, which is a very good thing. I love the internet. I love being able to talk to a consumer with extreme knowledge. I kind of mentioned that at the beginning. I hate it when people come in and they just don't know. The, the, they probably won't see this, um, so I don't think I'm going to offend anybody, but the older people that walk in and say they're going to dealership to dealership, get out of my life. I mean, you're just, it's a waste of my time to, to, to deal with someone who walks in going dealership to dealership because right behind you, 10 seconds later, I can take somebody who's walking in saying, hey, I want to buy right now. So that's the kind of mentality that a lot of dealerships have. Not being rude, not being narcissistic, not being egot egotistical, just telling you the way it is, okay? So again, I got a 14... Uh, Chevy Malibu, if I can write right, if I can cor write correctly, right, M-A-L-I-B-U. This is an LT model, okay? We're selling it for 13000 Gosh, I can't write. I'm trying to write. Give me a second. $13,276, okay? Now, Car Gurus, which is a great site, they tell you exactly what's going on with this car. This tells you how long we've had it in inventory, that it's a one-owner vehicle, all this stuff. So, uh, Car Gurus tells us that we're $1,048 into a good deal. So, with that in mind, kind of what I was just mentioning, if this was $1,048 bad deal, you wouldn't even call us. So, this is the type of things that we have to deal with. So, the analogy that I like to use with, with my customers when I'm talking to them about price, at 2 o'clock in the morning, if you're looking on the internet and you see this car and you said it's a, it says it's a bad deal, you're just gonna move on. I don't even get an opportunity to talk to you. So therefore, when we're setting everything out on the internet, we've gotta have it set up for that kind of situation. So so let's go, let's go into this part because everybody always wants to say, what's the book value of things? I have no problem showing book values on anything that I sell. I'm gonna use NADA because um, if I use this terminology, left-hand side, that means clean trade-in. If I use the term right-hand side, that means retail. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna put here, left-hand side, right-hand side. Left-hand side, as you can see right there on, on the board, is $12,075. Right-hand side, retail, is $14,700. Okay, so after reconditioning, which generally speaking, a, a car like this is gonna cost about $1,000 to recondition. Um, so you can see that we probably aren't gonna be able to give $12,000 for this car because if we have to spend another thousand on top of that, that means we have a profitability of $276. So I'm sure you can agree that's not fair. So it's probably a ten dollars to $11,000 trade-in vehicle. Um, and then we can sell it for thirteen two dollars after we put tires on it or anything like that. So uh, if there's any dents, things, scratches like that. So let's go in, let's go into this. Let's see, show you where I'm at with this and then information you need. So the purchase price of this car is $13,276, okay? So I'm going to use Kentucky since I'm in Kentucky. So this is varies based off of your state. So in Kentucky, we have 6% sales tax. So 6% sales tax here in Kentucky is $796. So all the title taxes, or excuse me, all the title, license plate fees and stuff that we need to collect for, for Kentucky is $359. Again, this is something that can vary. If you're in California, this number is more like a thousand bucks. So um, I sell a lot of cars in California. That's why I know that off the top of my head. So 
bottom line, you're $14,431. So this is how you buy a car when you're brand new into the game. Most banks are gonna to wanna to see at least 20% down, 20% of this number. Now, if you can get 20% of this number, that would be better. Because if you can get to an 80% or lower loan to value, my cat's in here, he wants out. Give me one second, see you later, buddy. Um, so if you can get 20% or better uh, uh, equity from this number here, that's good. If you can get 20% or better from this number here, you're even better. So the banks are gonna look at it. So uh, coming into it, you wanna be 14, 431 out the door. So if we do, if we have 20% down, that means we're at 26.55 money down. If you have 10% down, you're gonna have $1,327 down, okay? So, so that's where you wanna be at. So the very first thing is you wanna come in with cash in hand. Now this 20% down can be cash, it can be a free and clear trade. Um, if you owe money on a trade, but we're not even gonna talk about that, but most likely if you've bought a car in the last two to three years, you come in and try to trade it and you haven't put any money down, you're gonna have negative equity, so don't expect to have equity on a trade and go in. So that means these numbers go up, which is, means more money down here. You need to have 30 or 40% down. So with, with that being said, the uh, if you come in with a good interest rate, a 720 or better credit score at a 5% interest rate. So I know everybody's like, 5%, that's high. I'm telling you, 5% is a good number to utilize when you're coming in to buying a car. The reason we want to use 5% rate is because a lot of banks have fees. Banks, you know, there's just variables out there. So if you can, if you can sit there and picture just a little bit higher on the rate and picture something, you'll come in play. When you have, when you have excellent credit, this is gonna take care of itself. So you don't even have to worry about that. So if you have a 5% rate on 60 months, you're gonna have a 222 payment. And by the way, just to kind of give you an idea, if you have 4%, a full point better, you're talking this is 217. So it's only like five bucks, you know? I mean, are you really gonna like quabble and whine about $5? So that's what that equates to if you have a 4% rate. So now I'm talking about that first time buyer, that person coming in with not with whatnot. So, that, that is, again, case-by-case case basis. So who knows where we're gonna be at on this. So I'm gonna use a good rule of thumb of 13% rate, okay? Now you can have 17, 18, 19, 24%. There's some, some plate states out there that have a whole lot higher rate. So at a 13% rate, you're at 268 with 20% down. So that, that, is, that is the key with 20% down, that's where you're at. So $2,600 on a $13,000 car, this is where you're at. So if you're walking in and wanting a 250 payment, you better put 20% down. So let's talk about the four things that you should know and be prepared for when you're coming in and buying your first car. So the first thing that you wanna do is have an open mind. So uh, walk in, do your research online. That's gonna be the best thing is do your research online. But uh, come in an open mind, deal with a professional, Make sure that they got your best needs in, in, in mind, not just their pocketbook. And come in with an open mind that you have to be flexible. So now coming in with an open mind can be done prior to, like I said earlier, about doing your research. So if you've done your research, then the step one is really not a big deal because you can sit there and have all the information based off of what I'm telling you. Say, hey, listen, I got 25% down. I got, a, I got a POS trade. I got an old trade that I got for my first car that's worth probably 500 bucks. You know, now, now you've got all sorts of positive things going. So um, the number two thing that is, is, and I just mentioned it, is money down. You want to and need to have money down. So 19 year old, my son was 19 year old. I mentioned him earlier, 23, 23 now. When he was 19, he came in and he's like, dad, I wanna buy a car. I'm like, no problem. I've done things for him up front to make sure that he had a good credit score at the age of 18, that he could walk into the dealership and buy whatever he wants. So now we had a game plan. Number one step, have an open mind, right? So I'm the Chevy dude. I sell Chevys. I'm one of the top Chevrolet sales in the country. My son wants a Camaro, right? So I'm like, yes, yes, let's, let's do it, Zach. You know, I said, hey, we can get you a Camaro. After I start looking at things, after I started doing the research, I'm looking at Zach and I'm like, dude, Camaro's way out of your budget, man. I said, I said you're, you've got good money down. You know, you got all this stuff, but I said, we're still too high. I don't feel comfortable with the payments you're gonna have, stuff like that. I said, so let's let's look at other cars. Oh, shame 
of my life, I sold my son a Camaro. Or, excuse me, I sold my son a Mustang. We had a Mustang that we just took in on trade, 50,000 miles, that was something really similar to this, like 13, 13 grand, 14 grand, something like that, where a Camaro was hovering around $6,000 more at about $20,000. So I'm like, dude, I was like, I want you to drive a Camaro, but we need to go with this Mustang. It's a V8, it's a GT, leather, heated seats, all that good stuff. I said, you've got some nice cool frills. I said, but we need to keep your payment extremely good. So not only do I tell you to be open-minded, I'm open-minded as well. Trust me, I've got harassed multitude of times of coming in and uh, that my son drives a Mustang because I hate Mustangs. Mustangs, there's five things that I hate about Mustangs and they're all the same thing. So you'll see my shirt on my website. So number three is come in with a co-signer. So if you have not had the privilege, which is this totally different uh, video that I'll do down the road. If you have not had the privilege of having credit before you're 18 years old, and you're like, Mike, how do you get credit before you're 18? You gotta have credit when you're 18. Again, that's a video down the road that I'll, that I'll do. So, but uh, come in with a co-signer. Come in with somebody who's well-established. Uh, Mom, hey, the cat's back. So, so this is this is my cat, Smokey. He's in menace. You're a good boy though, aren't you? So, so come in with a co-signer, 720 or above credit score, and then sit there and uh, make sure that they're well-established. So like a mom or dad, aunt, uncle, grandma, grandpa, they're probably going to be well-established. A brother or sister, maybe. You know, it depends. If that brother's five years older than you and you're 18 years old, there's, there's close. There's, prox there's, there's, there's a possibility there. So it just depends. So come in with a good qualified co-signer. Um, the fourth one is income. Income is extremely important. So most of the time at 18 years old, you don't have a lot of income. You probably need to have 2,000 to 2,500 minimum income. That's gross income, so that's before taxes and anything is taken out. You need to have two to 2,500 minimum income out there. So that's $24,000 a year um, or, or a little bit more at $2,500 a month. So, so that's the type of income minimum you have to have on it. So it's going to be important to have good job time, stuff like that. So now the reason my son got approved, which by the way, this is in 2000, this is four years ago. So interest rates have changed, but I walked in and got him a 4% interest rate at 19 years old. So it's pretty hard to do nowadays. Uh, even, even with myself, I'm over 800 credit score. Um, even with myself getting a 4% rate is kind of iffy. So, um, so, uh, coming in, he got, I had all, we had all those things in line. So he, he didn't have this though. Uh, unfortunately, a Marine and E2, they make about $1,800 a month. But the thing is, he's in a particular job. He had a few things on his credit already before he, before he went in and that kind of waved it out. So that's why I said up front that it's all case by case basis. So uh, as much as all confusing as this is, it's exactly that, it's confusing. So um, again, like I said before, it's, it's, this is the biggest question I get. And this is why for the people I've never responded to, I see the text message and I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't have an hour to explain it. This is why I have never responded because it's an extremely difficult situation to talk about and it's an extremely difficult thing to do. And number five, after you buy a car, this is the biggest thing you need to do. I'm going to write this in big fat letters. Keep it. The worst thing you can do, I'm going to put a big exclamation points after this. The biggest mistake you can do of buying a car is trade it a short time after. Because then what's going to happen is this $2,600 you put down on this car, say goodbye to that. You don't have that money anymore. It's like when you trade a car a year later, a year and a half later, it's like you took that $2,600 and you put it in a fire. That's exactly what that is. The best analogy that I could come up with. So with that being said, keep that for three, four years. So I'm using the 60 month term. Um, I wouldn't on your first loan, I wouldn't try to go past 60 months. Um, 72 months is a term out there. Do not under any circumstances, zero, there's no reasons at all. Any dealership who wants to rebuttal this, I will absolutely make you look like an idiot if you try. If you go past 72 months, you are getting scammed, plain and simple. There's zero reasons to get past 72 months. Oh, well, we can get this warranty for you. It's going to keep your payment the same. It's only 75 months. No, you do not get the warranty at 75 months. You basically tell that dealership, hey, I'll do it if you can keep my payment at 72. That's it. Remember, everything costs money in a car business. There's nothing for free. There's nothing thrown in. Everything costs money. So, so 
that's the biggest thing is to keep your car. Don't get rid of it. So if you have a 60 month term, keep it 36 to 48 payments. And I say payments, not months, because your first payment is typically not gonna be due for a month and a half, 45 days, six weeks, whatever the case may be. So you're actually gonna keep it for approximately 38 to 50 months before you decide to trade. The reason we wanna do that is because it allows you to pay off the loan, it allows you to build amazing credit, car credit's the best credit you can have, and then, in, and then thirdly, it allows you to walk in and say, hey, I'm gonna trade and have extremely little or no negative equity. You do not want to trade a car if you have water. That's what they call it. If you have negative negative number, if your car is worth $10,000 and you owe 12, you're underwater. This is your water line right here. So you're underwater. So that's why they call it. And they also call it negative equity. Dealerships call it hooked. They, they call it all sorts of different goofy things. So that's what I'm talking about with negative equity. You want to walk in to a position where your car is worth 12,000 if I can write that, we'll say 12 one since I wrote 12 one and you owe 10. So now you don't have any negative equity or above the water line. So I know I went fast and I'm trying to keep this vlog short um, as much as I love to talk, but I know it's extremely confusing. If you got questions, hit them down below. I'll be more than happy to answer anything for you, get them all done, throw them in text messages um, in the comments below and I'll, and I'll try to answer as, I, as best I can. So I can't sit there and do thousands and thousands of people uh, answering how to get your best car deal or anything like that. So again, this is how you do it. So again, thanks a lot. If you like this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the little bell for notifications and the thumb up. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day and drive safely.